Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Ignite Showcases episode number 14. My name is Vanessa and I'm your host today. I'm a former colleague of some of the co-founders of Ignite and I'm happy and feel very honored <laughs> to host today's episode presenting Isabella. I'm turning from Tokyo, this amazing city that will host the next Olympic and Paralympics next year. So thank you everyone. I have a lot of people saying, oh my God, mom is here. <laughs> saying my daughter is beautiful oh my god <laughs> okay hi mom okay guys before i introduce myself i would like to give you a quick introduction into ignites ignites is an international team of passionate olympic games experts who are providing specialized consultancy services for mood sport events. So most of the four co-founders have been involved in the sport events industry since almost 10 years. So, and if you would like to know more about their services, please have a look on their website, okay? Uh, it's gonna show in your screen right now, okay. The international team of Ignites has been founded early this year, but the first ideas and talks about it have been already since 2016. So the idea to create a company together was already there since a while. This year, the time has just was just right. So the core team of the four core, mem core members uh, came together and created a big network with 17 in 70 international freelancers, including myself. They are called igniters, who are so rich in experience and on top they all share the same values and they're always seeking to deliver with excellence and passion. So to introduce and promote their team called Igniters and Services, uh, we developed the Ign Ignite showcases and the knowledge, what is serious? The main objective of these two series is to introduce the showcase and showcase event professionals within Ignite's network to inspire others to consider a career in events and to provide knowledge, insight into the planning and organization of what actually happens behind the scenes of the events. So for today's dynamic, so whenever you have a question or you would like to know more about a certain topic, please feel free to add your questions in the chat function in the Facebook, in the comments. So don't forget to note down where you're from and maybe your background. We are looking forward to receiving your question and comments for a fruitful discussions. Okay, thank you so much. We have a lot of comments here. Hey, Priscila, Gustavo Moraes. We have a lot of people here. Okay, guys, sorry. I, I have to focus here. <laughs> uh, before we join, uh, we bring Isabella in. I would like to thank Ignite and especially Neil and Gustavo for the opportunity to be an igniter and to host this episode today. So I will quickly make an introduction about myself. Okay, uh, as some of you know, I'm Brazilian. I cur I'm currently living in Tokyo with my husband, Alan, and my son, Tel. He's seven years old. Uh, and my career in planning and organizing sport events started in the Brazilian Blind Sport Federation back in 2002, when I was just 17 years old. So this brought me the interest of studying physical education and sport in Sao Paulo. And after being part of the Brazilian Paralympic team in Beijing 2008, I left the Brazilian Blind Sport Federation to, do, to join the Rio 2016 project, which at that time we were just starting the candidature process. Uh, and there I have been involved in the structure phase of the sport department the, to plan the operations of the Olympic and Paralympic sports in the program with a team uh, of the sport competition and uh, on the sport operations team of 11 people and to run the SOC at the games time as a SOC manager. So after the Rio Games, I took, uh, I took over a role in the Brazilian Olympic Committee as a project manager of the sport department for one year and six months. And I had the chance to experience from the other perspective, the everything, all the elements, the planning elements to, uh, to prepare the athletes and the National Olympic Committee to a uh, multi sport event. So it was uh, an amazing experience. And then Tokyo 2020 invited me 
in 2019 to implement the sport delivery program as part of the Agenda 2020 and the new norm recommendations from the IOC to the OCOGS. In parallel, I also planned and trained the SOC uh, for the Tokyo 2020 test events. As of now, as February, I'm currently working uh, for the host country planning and integration department of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 in charge of the developing the client planning framework in conjunction with FIFA. So, yeah, I feel so blessed to the way the sport events brought me to life, the experience to live in, in Tokyo in different and to feel different cultures. cultures. And I'm sure for my family as well, this is a unique experience. So thank you, the sport events for that. So enough said about me. I'm super delighted to be the host of a good friend and colleague of mine, Isabella. I know Isabella since 2007, when we had the chance to work together in the Ipsa World Games in Sao Paulo, which is the uh, games for the blind athletes uh, in Brazil. And again, we had the chance to cross paths during the Rio 2016 Olympic and Paralympic Games, where she worked in the transportation and arrivals and departures departments and was her doorway into the world of events. And since then, she has worked for, I will have to read because the list is huge. 2017 Fifth Asian Indoor and Martial Art Games in Ashgabat, Turkmenistan. Olympic Broadcasting Services for Pyeongchang 2018 Olympic Games. 2018 Summer Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires. Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi, UAE. First Global Challenge and several projects with FIFA, including Women's, Women's World Cup in France and Beach Soccer World Cup in Paraguay. Currently, Bella is working in the World Government Summit in Dubai, UAE. So after working Rio 2016, Bella embarked on a three-month backpacking journey, which in the end lasted six months. She visited 17 countries, and during her travels, she was enchanted by the culture and lifestyle in the Middle East, which is one of the main reasons she is working in Dubai right now. So let's welcome Isabella, are you in? Oi, tudo bem? Olá, tudo bem? Muito bom ver todo mundo aí. Oh, sorry, we are not doing this in Portuguese, right, Vanessa? Okay, so let me start again. Portuguese. Mas al her is Isabella Anamin el Brasil. And not Fico. in Arabic as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, my mistake. <laughs> Uh, welcome everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm talking from Dubai. It's quite hot now, as everyone knows. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to see so many friends uh, watching us and happy to be here with Ignite and with you, Vanessa. Okay, thank you. And I, I, I forgot to mention this, uh, Bella, uh, in, I think, uh, well, I, I will let her to, to mention that during our episode. Uh, she had the chance to, yes, I think you can see here. Yes, it's an amazing, uh, I think she, she became an Arabic, uh, an Emirati, I think, because she had the chance to shake hands with the, his highness, the ruler of the UAE. So yes, I think she's doing great there. And so let's hear more about uh, this amazing experience. Okay, so Bella, I have some questions for you, and then probably we will see some questions coming from the, the audience. But I will start with some of the questions that, I, that I'm really interested to know. So, first of all, I know you were an athlete, right? You were uh, you as a beach volleyball athlete. Uh, I'm sure you loved sports. So, but what actually made your mind to work for the real games and what's your background that helped you achieve that i think this is something that is really uh, everyone is willing to know so thank you for that so i i believe a sport it was always in my life or even uh, watching formula one with my parents uh, early morning in brazil or being an athlete as you mentioned before a beach volleyball player 
Uh, and I think uh, I was always involved and I love sport. I, I hope I will be always in, uh, involved. And this is one of my hobbies. I just need to understand w w which sport they practice in the countries that I'm living in. Here, for example, during the summer, it's quite hard to play beach volleyball, right? <laughs> or we can play in the dunes in the desert. <laughs> but I think it's a good idea. Uh, so as an athlete, I think as ev everyone else, we dream uh, to participate in our Olympics. Uh, I, I quit the, the journey quite earlier, and then I managed to participate in the Olympics. I was the torch bearer in Rio 2016, that I'm really proud of it. I even have my torch. Uh, and I think I, I, I achieve um, this dream, uh, being part of the team in Rio 2016. And again, my, my background, I used to work with cruise ships operation. We were responsible for the turnaround of the cruise ship, managing 5,000, 10,000 people, uh, all the airport operation, hotel, baggage, excursion, and transfers. Uh, so I think this was quite a challenge for me. I was really young at that age. And then I think this was what helped me to, to join the team and to contribute with the team. Okay, wonderful. But how do you believe your experience as an athlete helped you to work in the Rio Games? Uh, can you give us more details on what was your roles and responsibilities there? So in Rio, I stayed almost five years and I managed to work in the transportation, but also in the arrivals and departures area that I was responsible to build a strong relationship with the client and of course, to create the better experience. As everyone knows, arrivals and departures, uh, arrivals is the first experience of the guests and the clients in the in the games, right? So if they are happy, everything will go smoother from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one of the challenges, I believe, it was it was the first time that they have a client area in the arrivals and departures team. So I need to build from scratch. Um, and also create from my own mind and our management mind what we want to deliver, what we want to achieve with that. Uh, during the games, I need to leave a team of, I believe, around 50 staffs and volunteers that not all of them have experience or even professional experience. So we were responsible for all the training, but also during the games and during like long hours, we need to support them because we know we this is a legacy, right? The volunteers and also their first experience. Uh, also, I was working with a lot of people that had a lot of experience in the airport operation or airlines, and I didn't have any. I never worked for an airport or airline before, but I felt quite comfortable uh, on leading the team and being part of the team. Uh, I believe I have a strong uh, leadership and this part of being an athlete, right? We, we face challenges and we need to be leader when we are in the court. Uh, and I think this helped me to like overcome the challenges. And I think strength is one of my main skills. I will never give up. <laughs> yeah, we know that. We have some comments here, amazing, by the way. Uh, Gustavo Arada said, for a woman who to shake hands with an Arabic ruler is really not for anyone. And I'm sure, and I agree with that. Thank you, Gustavo. We have other amazing comments, cute uh, people missing us. Uh, love this Bella. Hi, Bella. Excellent professional. It's a uh, saludos desde Paraguay. So it's amazing. And yeah, we, you definitely uh have a lot of people who are interested to know more about your story so okay uh yeah you are so talented bella love from india yay that's great okay thank you uh bella thank you for these insights it's indeed uh really good to have the athlete experience uh in the organizing committee i'm sure this uh, this brings the touch that uh, we need for the planning and, and the operation. So thank you for that. Uh, and I'm sure just uh, just as for you, uh, the Rio 2016 games were an unforgettable experience to a lot of professionals. A lot of them are here today listening to us, including myself. And I'm sure it opened the opportunity to engage with different cultures, to, to learn and to work with different professionals and for sure, 
uh, to deliver the Olympics in our country is amazing and an unforgettable experience. So, but may I ask you, what made you want to travel the world and establish an international career after the Games? Oh, this is uh, a long story, but I'll make it short. Uh, everything started, I think, back to, to 2012, when I was planning my first holiday after starting working in Rio 2016. And I had the plan to go to US and visit New York because I said, wow, this is amazing, I need to go there. Uh, in the end, I ended up coming from du to Dubai for the first time and also traveling around China for like around 20 days. Uh, during the winter. <laughs> uh, and I think this completely changed my mind about Middle East and, and Asia and different cultures. It was my first experience. Uh, and then I, I realized that the world is so big uh, and we need to try, right? We need to travel, we need to discover, we need to, to have the experience. If not, we got stuck on whatever we see on media or we read on the news, you know, life is so different. Each country is different between themselves, even in the Arab world. Everything, each country have their own uh, culture, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what changed my mind in the beginning. And I keep traveling and traveling to different places. If you see my bucket list, you, not, you wouldn't believe what are my next goals. Uh, and then also after the games, I decided that I want a, a time off to think about that experience that was quite intense in my life and completely changed my career, uh, my desire of traveling the world and conquering the world. Uh, and, and then I, I just went for a backpack trip for three months, three months. And of course, I want to learn from that backpack trip, right? Because uh, living in Brazil, I moved once. So when I went to travel, I remember my mom saying, uh, I can't believe you're gonna stay, you're gonna be traveling with this backpack like around 15 kilos. And then after three months, I decided to extend and she said, I can't, be I still can't believe, Bella. Are you okay? I said, yes, I'm completely fine. I'm enjoying, I just have what I have, you know? So I'm used to that. <laughs> I don't miss anything. Of course, we miss family and parents and friends, but I was quite fine with, with my life and my experience because you never know when you're gonna have the chance again, right? So far, I didn't have the chance again. So I'm really glad that I did that. And during this trip, I decided to go to travel in Middle East and, and Africa, but also after extending, I was just going with the flow. And I, and I have some friends from India here, uh, my brother and sister, and they are not only friends. Uh, and I managed to do silent meditation, for example. It was a unique experience, more than 10 days without working. This is the biggest challenge. <laughs> uh, and then when I was traveling, uh, I saw some friends in Turkmenistan that I had never heard about. I even didn't know where it was in the map. But in the, re in the reality, I didn't care that much. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> Google it. I just said, wow, this looks interesting, you know, as I want to discover the world and become a globetrotter, this is a quite good experience. And yeah. then I start talking to friends and uh, I went for interview and I managed to get a position there. This is how my backpack trip ends. I went back to Brazil to pack again <laughs> to go to Turkmenistan. <laughs> Wow, amazing, amazing. There are a lot of comments here, Isabella. Uh, great, Bella, you are the best. Love from New York. She didn't make to come to New York, New, New York right? <laughs> After Dubai. Love from Australia, Bella, you're amazing. Dani Vieira. But yes, I have been to New York to visit, right? <laughs> yeah, you have. Uh, Linda's, yes, oh, okay. We are great and excellent professionals. We have a lot of friends here. Isabella, we're traveling an exceptional professional. Good to see you. Okay, we have a lot of people here uh, uh, talking about you. So I know that being an expat and working abroad from my own experience is sometimes challenging and let's say not easy. So can you share with us what are your challenges? What do you face in your daily life as a, I should say, Olympic gypsy, games gypsy, <laughs> living in different countries? I'm, I'm sure our audience is, is really willing and curious to know more about it. Oh, thank you for that. And I definitely know you are also a traveler, right? <laughs> so many Not experience. as you. <laughs> <laughs> Not as you. 
Uh, I think uh, the biggest challenge are planning. I love to plan, but I can't plan that much about my own life, right? At least I can plan during the events. Uh, we never know about tomorrow. Uh, we never know about our next job, next country. So it's really, really hard to, to even build strong relationships, become a minimalist, you know, you just, it's like the backpack. At least I have a little bit more nowadays than a 17 kilos uh, backpack. <laughs> I always travel with the airline allowance. I'm, I never paid for, for extra luggage. And of course, in the beginning, my family was asking, Bella, when are you coming back? And then I almost said, I'm not coming back. I don't have any plans. But nowadays, they even don't care anymore. They don't ask. They, they just say, whenever you come, we are here, you know, waiting for you and follow you on the, the, on the social media. Social media is really important nowadays because even in the situation, I think we got more connected with people, even if we live near, nearby in the same city. Uh, so I, for me, I, I felt like everyone else, right? Doesn't matter the distance, we always speak in the virtual uh, world. So my family and my friends, they are always following me on the social media uh, and they can, sh I can share a little bit about my journey with them as I don't speak with them every day. Uh, the other thing is keep, keep, keeping things everywhere. I have uh, so many good friends that hosted me like Carol. She hosted me <laughs> several times when I was coming back and forward from the UAE. Uh, once she even stayed with my, with my luggages and, and some things that I had, uh, uh, not funeral, but I have few things and she stayed, she keep uh, everything like a storage room in her house. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really good to have friends everywhere because they can also help you on, on these uh, challenges of moving, but also you have friends to visit everywhere. Um, it's really hard to build strong relationship because sometimes we are there for two, three months uh, or you are there for more time, but you never know what will gonna happen next. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so far uh, in this past almost four years, I've, I think I have do, uh, do, uh, doing great. I have so many friends all around the world. As you can see, they are text me and they are watching me live. I think they miss me. That's why they are watching me live. Uh, and then, uh, I miss a, a routine, I miss a house, I miss like having a time to work, you know, a lot of things that people dream of. Uh, oh, Bella is a backpacker, is a traveler, you know, they always say, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, but I miss a normal life, you know, because we always miss what we don't have, right? Yeah, the simple things of life, right? I know, uh, 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 well, you have to teach me how to travel with the allowance because it's impossible, I can't. <laughs> And 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 <laughs> Rodrigo Rangel is just saying that okay, there's a luggage in his home. <laughs> yes, I left here. <laughs> I left my luggage there in my last trip to Doha. Yeah. Well, but you know this virtual uh, life of people getting in touch with the uh, with uh, via social media. Well, this year it's so easy, right? Because everyone now is on is on the social media due to this crazy moment we are all living. But for sure, we will take some good lessons from it. So thank you. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really sure that some people would like to uh, to have your okay. I want to travel all around the world, but you have these challenges and and it's good to everyone to know the good and the bad side of of everything okay so let's see what else we have okay let me see if there is any question uh no no questions just some a lot of people bella <laughs> Well, there is some some Italian comment. I'm sorry, I won't it, read it, otherwise. It's my, my little sister, but it's my father. Uh, oh, text me, of amazing, course, in <laughs> amazing. Okay, so how do you feel? I have one more question here. How do you feel like working the Middle East in a different field today? Because uh, we know that you are not uh, working for sports at the moment. So share with us this experience. Okay, definitely I'm not working for sports uh, for now. Uh, so I have been in the Middle East uh, in the UAE for the past almost two years, coming back and forward between other events. 
uh, when I say uh, build strong relationship with locals and, and, and also with the expats, because UAE 90% of the population is expats. And uh, I'm so grateful that I was able to build a strong relationship and I have so many friends here. Of course, the majority of them in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm so happy to be here and to have so many friends. I have been working with my, my boss from Special Olympics in the past three projects. Uh, Sanjay, I don't know if you are watching. <laughs> uh, and now I have started to learn Arabic because sometimes you are in a meeting that they only speak Arabic and uh, I would love to understand a little bit, but of course they, they speak, all of them speak English and better than my English, I would say. Uh, and I would say that there is no challenge. It's like uh, any other country, you know, you just, of course, it's good to learn. I love to learn uh, about culture and religion. I'm so curious, I keep asking Eva that worked me, oh, what is this holiday about? You know, what is this? I keep asking her so many things <laughs> because I'm really, really curious. And uh, definitely you can see that I love the country. I love the experience uh, to live here. Uh, it's a challenge uh, this summer around three months of like summer and the heat is wow i can't describe you know I, I thought i would say you know i'm brazilian i'm from here i'm so used to that you know during summer we have more than 40 degrees but no 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 you have no idea how it is here sometimes 6 a.m 5 a.m is more than 50 degrees you feel like 57 the other day and we say okay there is no limit <laughs> right uh, let's wait the, the summer is just starting and the humidity is quite uh, quite high here uh, but there is a lot of things dubai it's amazing city so many things so many entertainment i think even if you live here for years you'll never be able to go to all the restaurants that they have here uh, so yes it's a unique experience but i don't think there is uh, any challenge you just need to adapt yourself to a new country as any other country in Europe or in Asia or in the US. Okay. Okay, actually, I have two questions from the audience. The first of, the first one is, when are you working, when are you coming to work in India? Oh, don't even say that this is my friend, Gaurav, the one who booked the silent meditation for you. It's a friend that I made in Thailand. Uh, when I was traveling, I think it was 2014, maybe. Uh, and we become friends and we keep in touch so, uh, since then. I managed to go to India. Uh, I, I met his family. He already went to Brazil and met his family. So this is how the world connects. I was planning to go to India this year uh, to work, but uh, it was postponed. It was a FIFA uh, World Cup, a Women's Under-17 World Cup, but didn't happen so far. But let's see. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we have uh, comments here. Okay, we have another question, by the way. Bella, do you miss Baixogavia, <laughs> Marcelo, <laughs> and his left? <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is a friend that I made in Bashagavia. You know, I have so many good friends that I made in Bashagavia. So just explaining to, to, yes, to uh, our I audience. Would. Yeah, Bashugava is a place in Rio where, where basically you just go and then you can go to one of the restaurants, you just can grab a, a drink in the street uh, uh, and walk around and meet friends or be with your friends. And even it was a really famous place to celebrate my team, my, my football team, Flamengo. Uh, and then I met these friends when we were celebrating one of the championships and uh, we became Flamengos and Bashugava friends. So that's why he's asking, good to see you here. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay, we have one comment here from Mario Silenti. Hey, girls, good to see you. We miss everyone. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Hey, um, yeah. Uh, Mauro has a question. I think she already re answered, but anyway, how was your experience? Uh, how your experience in the volleyball helped you uh, in working with events? If you want to comment something else, please feel free. No, I know why he's asking me. He was my first coach. He stayed okay. with me during like, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years when we, we, we won all the championships that we were participating, like the gold, uh, the gold uh, age, let's say for us. <laughs> uh, 
So, so far, I think uh, uh, he helped me on build my strength, right? Okay. <laughs> because he was not easy with us. And then I think uh, uh, he was always, always pushing us and, and, and uh, trying to bring us to another level. And I think this is one of the parts that I always try to do with my team. Uh, sometimes I go too hard on them. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think, I, I think it helped me a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Obrigada, Mauro. Uh, would you like to come? Another question, okay, from Dani Vieira. Would you like to come to Australia and work at the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023? Any chance? <laughs> I don't even say that is on my plans, but it's still too far away. I I cannot even <laughs> plan about the New Year's, you know. So I definitely had this on my radar. Okay, Hope to wonderful. see you there, Dani. Uh, can you? Sh another question from Gladson Moraes. Can you share a bit more about how is to lead the operations game EU and E? UAE. So I can say it was uh, the same as in other countries. Uh, of course, each games, I think we have uh, each games had their own challenges and each country had their own challenges. But for me, it was quite good experience. I need to manage it two different airports in two different Emirates. <laughs> uh, so one was in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and Dubai is quite international. Abu Dhabi is quite local. A lot of meetings were in Arabic, but I had good friend, uh, Abdulaziz, that helped me a lot. On, uh, and also, Juan was part of the team, and Denise, that helped me a lot. Uh, during the games, I even didn't manage to go to Dubai, so I had Denise managing the airport all by her own. Uh, I was just assisting her. Uh, and then was quite good experience. Of course, there is the challenge with drivers, with transportation. There are different challenges always. Uh, also, I can see Malik that he worked with transportation with me in First Global. Good to see you. He knows the challenges we are speaking about, right, Malik? <laughs> okay, well, we have a lot of questions. I'm happy. Uh, in all these years, uh, San Sanjay, I'm sorry if I cannot Sanjay. see it. Sanjay. Sanjay is my boss, my current boss. Okay, so I, cho I, I chose right. Uh, not sure if, the, okay, in all the years in your wealth of experience, what you would you say was your favorite project and why? Please make the right answer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Give the right answer. <laughs> I, 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 I love all the works that I do. Uh, I'm, I'm being like serious, you know, it's not because I want to make everyone happy. Uh, there is always uh, good things and, and learnings that you get from these uh, events. But doing the Olympics in your hometown is something unique, you know. So that's why I decided to travel after because I said, what can I do more that will challenge more and it will give me proud, you know. Uh, so, of course, I'm happy and proud of all the delivers that I have, but I, I, I think we will never have the same thing again, you know, because right, even sure. if we are doing another Games, it will not be the Olympics and the Paralympics back to Rio, right? I so, know. this was the unique and uh, experience. Yeah, I, I, I understand you, yes, for sure. Bella, I have a really interesting question from Tat Guinard. Bella, did you have any problem as woman in any country? I think this is really interesting for women that is willing to travel like you as a backpacker. So what, what's your advice? Okay, I can say uh, about traveling, but also professionally. Uh, anyway, I don't think there is a challenge about the country. I think we women, we face challenges right uh, everywhere. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm too like strong and I don't like to believe that I'm suffering something because I'm a woman. So it's really hard for me to, to take this consideration. But in the meantime, traveling, I can say a lot. Uh, during my backpack trip, I was in India and we all know a lot of things about India and women traveling alone. I was with good friends, but anyway, I saw the news about uh, India and, and it's something that happened in Goa at that time that Goa is quite of Thailand from India and then I, I got a little bit scared you know of mm -hmm. course I was with good friends so I felt quite comfortable they even didn't want me to see the news uh, and then I was going to continue my, my trip after that um, I, I felt a little bit concerned because when you are traveling, everything is so good. You know, all the, the, the experience, all the, the environment and the, even the air, you know, everything is so good and so happy and all, all, only good things happen. 
but of course uh, bad things can happen also so i started yeah. to be a little bit scared at that time i keep traveling but anyway i was a little bit scared of what could happen if i was too open uh, to the road you know then i, uh -huh. I started having a bit more of concerns that i was not having after five months traveling right yeah Okay, I have uh, just a second. We have one question more, one more question. I just don't want to miss. Okay, here. Uh, Sipta, Bella, you have, a tra you have traveled a lot. What's your next dream travel destination? Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say this quite controversial. Controversial. It's I uh, want to go to North Korea. But I also want to go to Bhutan. Okay. So wow. this is how I am, you know. Uh, I just want to go to to a place that I know they're gonna change with time, and and I still can get the 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 essence of the place, you know. So I really like to discover places that are not quite open for tourism, like to Kyrgyzstan, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, this is what I like. But Bhutan is the most happiest country in the world, so it's a balance between the both countries, right? Yeah, amazing, really good. Okay, maybe we need a next, a next episode after these trips to, to share your experience there. Okay. Uh, uh, also make the same questions. Uh, Chipta is a friend from like uh, maybe 15 or 10 years ago when I was traveling in Brazil, uh, in Lençóis Maranhenses, and I met her. She's also a traveler. And by chance, we are both living in Dubai. Oh, that's soon. wonderful. That's great. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on how sports and those big events can make us closer as humans? Wow. Very deep question. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you, Said. Uh, happy to have you here. Uh, I think we discussed already a few of these uh, things uh, when we were back to the office. Uh, I, I really believe that sport can change the world, as I believe it changed for me, you know, like my personality. Of course, we have a lot from our parents, of the learnings and the education from our parents. Uh, but you build a lot of your, your strengths and, and, and your way of living with your family, with your work, with your friends, on the environment that you live. So if you leave a sport event, you need to be dedicated, you need to practice sports, you need, you need to try to be healthy, you need, you need to do so many things that are, that are good. And, and I think they give a, a good path for everyone. And also about team, team player, leadership, so many, so many amazing skills that you can develop with sport. That's mm -hmm. why I'm passionate with sports. Wow. Wow, a lot of, wow, this is amazing, Bella. Thank you so much for sharing all these insights. I have one more, uh, one more question. This is mine. <laughs> well, I know that, uh, well, we, we see that Middle East may host a lot of sport events. Of course, it will host. We have FIFA, uh, uh, Qatar uh, World Cup coming. Uh, and other sport events that are planning to 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 happen in the Middle East in the near future. So, and I'm about to move to Doha soon as well. So, what's your advice to me and to our uh, friends today uh, that are willing to work to live in an uh, in an Arab country? Uh, so. I'm not the most experienced, no. I have been here for two years and I have been traveling in the Middle East for a while. Uh, but I think it, it's not an advice to the Arab world, it's a, like a general uh, advice. Be open-minded, uh, go with your open heart uh, to meet people, to, to learn about new culture, new religion, because uh, culture and religion, there are so mixed that you even sometimes cannot clarify what it is, you know and you have your own experience and sometimes you are hired because of your experience right but you have a lot of people that you're going to work that have the local experience or other different type of experience so always taking consideration always learn from them as they are learning from you 
uh, it doesn't matter the age and doesn't matter the experience. There is always something you can learn with the people that you work. So that's one of the challenges to work in a different field like events with the government. Uh, and this is a completely new thing. I'm so happy to be learning. And now we are learning virtual events, right? This one we are doing. I, I managed to do a series of webinars uh, with the World Government Summit. Uh, we, we did more than 25 sessions. We became back of house. Uh, from an operation, a virtual operation, right? So we always learn, and this is a good thing from the world. There are always good things that you can get anywhere. Uh, always check the positions available. I agree with Vanessa. Of course, we have Qatar 2022 that will happen, hopefully, inshallah, as we say here. Uh, but I, I believe other events will come to, to the Middle East uh, in the future. Let's just wait to see what will happen. And then if you are coming to here, check positions available, but always speak to your connections, your friends or your colleagues, people that you have worked link, LinkedIn and everything that you can do your best. You know, don't wait for things to get to you. You need to move to, to, exactly. to get things, you know. And if you come from a summer country like you, don't forget to bring uh, clothes to cover yourself. Of course, there is a dress code uh, in the office. But it, as I mentioned before, each country is different from, uh, from another. So you definitely need to know about that country. Like, for example, Iran can be different from, uh, from uh, UAE. But here it's quite flexible. Uh, when we are not working, we can wear your clothes. We go to the beach. We can use bikinis here. <laughs> so it's not that different. We have the beach and we go to the bikini. We play beach volleyball here when it's not the summer. Uh, not everyone needs to cover their hair, use abayas or kanduras, but I have my abaya because you never know when you're going to need to use it. Did you have yours, Vanessa? Yeah, I have to buy mine as soon as I get there. <laughs> okay, I will get a last question from the audience, which is quite related to, to what you have just uh, answered us. Uh, what's the top three advice you can give to anyone entering the events world. So I think you kind of answered, not um, a little bit related to the Middle East, but if, if there is anything else that you would like to, to, to highlight. Okay, so basically it's be open-minded and, uh, and able to, to receive the knowledge that they have, uh, travel light, <laughs> and uh, enjoy, enjoy the experience. Okay. Enjoy the time that you have there because you don't know how long you're going to stay there and whenever you're going to have this opportunity again, right? Yeah. And, and came just came up a really interesting question. And I'm sure, guys, it's the last one, I'm, I promise, okay? <laughs> what was the best learning from the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games from Carla? Oh, this Car Our global Carla, yeah. sport manager for Rio 2016. Thank you for watching Ex this. <laughs> exactly. Good to see you here. Uh, so I worked for IBSA before, um, and of course I had experience doing. I think it was around 15 days or something like this. So I didn't have a, a lot of experience. Uh, I have people with disabilities in my uh, in my family, so I quite of learn how to live with that. But the Paralympics for me, it was a unique experience. Uh, I was telling inside a friend from work how I love the Paralympics environment uh, because we were so tired after the games and the Olympics, or uh, all the pressure on the service levels. And I, I, I was working a lot in the village. So when you see the transition and we only have like two days, uh, one day, two days between events, to get a, a, a bit of fresh, fresh air and, and renew ourselves for the, for the next journey to deliver the Paralympics. And when you are in the village and then you see everyone coming back and forth, cycling, uh, having lunch or like getting the transportation, all the arrivals with the logistics, the sport equipment and everything. Uh, and sometimes, or the majority of the times, you don't see their disabilities. And this for me is the biggest learning, you know, because I always pass through that. I don't have disability, but I'm too short. But I played beach volleyball anyway, and I didn't give up because I was too short. I keep playing and I was a really winner in that time. So I think this is the biggest learning that I have. Oh, that's amazing. Amazing answer to 
Close. Okay, guys, we are... Thank you very much, Bella, for sharing so many insights during our conversation today. I'm sure you are an inspiration for others who consider an international career, pursuing their dreams, being passionate, not only about the work, which is important, but definitely about your life and enjoying your life. So a true igniter, right? So yeah, we are coming to the end of today's session. I would like to say goodbye to all spectators and just before that to Bella. And Bella, would you like to say some uh, some goodbye to our to your friends, to our friends? So I would like to say thank you to Ignite for, for this uh, opportunity. I'm not a live person, so I'm not used it to do live. I'm used it to be back of house of a live. Thank you for all the friends who joined, for all the comments and all the contribution during this session. It was uh, a unique experience for me. I really enjoyed it. Maybe we, we can do others, right, Vanessa? Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you all on some point in the world. Uh, be safe. Thank you. Shukran. Obrigada. <laughs> so thank you. I would like also to thanks to Neil who accompanied and the support this session and the background as a director. We all wish you a good week. Stay healthy and see you soon, guys. Bye.